Hi, I'm Barclay Stewart. Thank you very much for uh, the opportunity to talk with you uh, about engaging uh, with global surgery during residency uh, and during your training uh, time. Uh, I'm very eager to work uh, with you in the Global Surgery Student Alliance. Uh, it's an extraordinary organization uh, and I look forward to, to engaging with each of you um, uh, throughout your training programs and potentially uh, as um, uh, applicants or residents uh, here at the University of Washington. I'm one of the general surgeons, trauma and burn surgeons uh, at the University of Washington uh, based at Harborview Medical Center and work very closely with our global surgery program. So I hope uh, today to cover a few uh, thoughts on engaging with global surgery uh, during training. Uh, we're going to discuss some opportunities that exist uh, to get involved with global surgery uh, no matter where you are in the country. Uh, Alexis asked me to describe my experience with global surgery and perhaps there might be a lesson uh, in there for you as well. Um, as we build uh, our global surgery program uh, further, uh, we have some thoughts about what the future of global surgery training might look like, and we'll share a couple of those with you. And then we'll outline some common career tracks uh, in global surgery uh, for you to think about as you plan your, uh, your training and career uh, through and beyond residency. So as you look to engage with global surgery, there's uh, several places uh, to look uh, during your training programs. First is certainly start where you are. Uh, there are many universities now across the country that have um, either nascent or very well-developed global surgery training programs, uh, and their experience and expertise uh, is, uh, is amazing. And if you're at this, one of those programs, um, certainly the best and uh, first way forward would be uh, to work with those near you. Uh, and even if there's not an established global surgery training program, most universities often have experts uh, in fields directly within or related to global surgery that you can leverage during your training. And this th these are things like public policy or economics, uh, health system strengthening, health services delivery, et cetera. Um, so don't uh, undervalue the experts outside of your department uh, and programs, um, even in places that have global surgery training programs. And then next is looking outside of your program. And there's a large network of people who are interested in and working in global surgery across the country, and it seems like it's growing daily. Uh, and we're really fortunate for that because the amount of work that needs to be done is uh, truly enormous and oftentimes overwhelming. Uh, and it's great to have an increasing um, network to rely on, both of students, of residents, uh, and faculty. Um, here at the University of Washington, like many other training programs, we very much welcome residents who are not residents at our program to engage with uh, both our residents and our uh, faculty mentors um, to do work that you're interested in uh, and that might benefit both our program, uh, you, and potentially your program as well. Uh, many professional societies are also heavily involved in global surgery work, and some uh, de facto, uh, and some have um, joined uh, as part of the, the momentum uh, around academic global surgery. Um, there are opportunities not only to find mentorship through those uh, organizations, uh, but also specific projects that uh, they are working on that certainly could benefit from your uh, passion uh, and talents and growing expertise. Uh, several professional societies also offer travel scholarships uh, that can help you get started by um, help you get started with other programs outside of the United States, uh, developing partners and collaborators and working on projects and contexts that are certainly different from your typical training programs. I also put uh, on this list the World Health Organization. Uh, they were, have been a great asset um, uh, to me and several of my colleagues here at the University of Washington uh, and several other uh, folks that have um, participated in their internship program uh, across the country. Um, they are uh, an extraordinary organization as well with very, very um, great mentors and experts working uh, in and around um, surgery, trauma, injury prevention, burn care, uh, emergency medical team uh, development and organization. Uh, and there's lots of opportunities, um, both formally and informally, to work with the World Health Organization at levels that we otherwise might not get exposed to. Uh, and then lastly, research is a big component of academic global surgery. And finding opportunities to engage with research at a high level uh, only um, accelerates your um, uh, training and engagement with global surgery. There are um, several um, opportunities, two of the m major ones. Uh, one is um, NIH Fogarty Global Health Training Program, and that's um, uh, obviously administered by the Fogarty International Center at the NIH. Um, they select 
uh, postdoctoral students, inc uh, including residents, uh, to do 11 months uh, of research in a specific um, country uh, based upon a, min uh, a consortium um, uh, administrating and mentorship model. Um, they also fund uh, research stipend uh, and your salary uh, and travel to and from uh, the research site. There's also a longitudinal curriculum um, that's led by experts in global health from many fields um, all around the world. That's a really extraordinary program to be a part of. Uh, and second, particularly if you're interested in more humanities-based approaches to global surgery, the Fulbright pr program would be something to look into. And no matter where you look to engage with global surgery, there are several uh, what I call here rules of engagement. Um, and they're not particularly different than any sort of other project engagement, but it's important just to recognize them. First is understanding your role. Um, embrace the fact that you're a trainee uh, and really leverage that to your advantage. Uh, people want to teach uh, and in many cases um, there is extraordinary amounts to learn from great mentors. So really uh, rely on that, particularly when you go uh, outside of the country. And the second is team composition. People often conflate um, lack of resources with a lack of expertise. Uh, and when you combine uh, passion, advanced pathology, and having to uh, work with limited resources, you often develop extraordinary clinicians with great skill and expertise, um, and uh, they shouldn't be undervalued. And then the next is the, uh, the environment that you're working in. Um, not all indications and methods uh, and techniques are appropriate uh, in all contexts, and understanding where you're working and who you're working with uh, and what opportunities exist for patients and, uh, and programs uh, in that context is important. Uh, a, either an informal or a formal needs assessment and analysis is an uh, important part of um, the um, uh, operations around your training program. Uh, it's important to maintain both your individual uh, and program's integrity. When you um, engage with global surgery programs and travel outside of the country, not, not only are you representing yourself, but your program. And it's important to maintain integrity uh, in your own personal and patient safety above all else. Um, Next is reciprocity. Uh, find opportunities to build bridges with your collaborators uh, on education and research opportunities that certainly go both ways, not only in the short term uh, as you're engaging with them directly, but over the long term as you look to sustain relationships and build programs in global surgery uh, tied back to your uh, home program. And then lastly, mentorship. It's important that you identify mentors uh, no matter what career you find yourself in, uh, and certainly in global surgery where there's not a lot of um, trails blazed ahead of you. And this includes uh, people that are looking out not only for your professional development, uh, but also your personal development um, and your academic interest as well. Uh, develop a mentorship team that's looking after all of you and that can help connect you to the uh, opportunities that you seek. So as mentioned, uh, Alexis asked me to talk a bit about my uh, journey of through global surgery during training um, and see if there is a potential um, lesson in there for one of you. Uh, I went to the Medical University of South Carolina that uh, at the time didn't have a global surgery training program. And uh, several of the mentors that I gravitated toward who were interested in global health were from the Department of Infectious Disease. Uh, and they were doing extraordinary work and research and they were very inspirational, excited people and that certainly drew me to them as a, as a student. Um, they encouraged me to apply for the Fogarty uh, Scholarship at the time, which no longer exists. Um, and I uh, didn't get selected in the first round. Some extra funding came available and I was selected thereafter and matched with Judd Walson, who is an um, infectious disease uh, clinician and um, a brilliant researcher here at the University of Washington who uh, was studying HIV and Helminth co-infection in Kenya. Uh, and I uh, went uh, to his research group and lab uh, in Kenya and spent a year. Uh, I learned an incredible skill set, not only technical, uh, but the non-technical skills about uh, being deferential and collaborative uh, and growing a research program uh, in a context that's not your home. Um, during that training program, I also became very close to uh, two of my best friends now, who are, um, one of them is a, is a researcher here, uh, who's Kenyan, and the second is now uh, an emer emergency medicine physician and global health researcher at Brown. Um, and they encouraged me to um, get a master's in public health degree with them. And we, after this, uh, this year, uh, went to the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine and, um, and uh, furthered our uh, academic um, skill set and interest in, in global, global health, sorry, through the master's in public health program.
as I was leaving, I wasn't sure exactly uh, where I wanted to go or what I wanted to do after medical school that I had completed just before the master's degree. Um, and I found a, 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 a opportunity at our student lounge to uh, be a tropical disease control officer for the then government of Southern Sudan. And I took the, took the number and called and interviewed and uh, got this position. Um, and also uh, a small scholarship to do research on hide uh, disease amongst uh, pastoralists in southern Sudan. So uh, my team and I in, in southern Sudan were responsible for mapping the prevalence of um, tropical diseases across the country and organizing mass drug treatment, um, sorry, empiric mass drug treatment campaigns based upon the prevalence of uh, certain diseases. Um, and I was planning on coming back to the United States afterwards and uh, completing a residency in internal medicine and a fellowship in infectious disease, uh, and then returned to Sub-Saharan Africa to, um, uh, to work in tropical disease control. But most of that actually changed in one night. Uh, our team would go from community to community uh, doing our sampling and planning our, um, uh, to follow mass drug treatment campaigns. Um, and at night, we would stay in schools or hospitals uh, to seek shelter from, uh, at the time, South, uh, Southern Sudan was a bit volatile. And we went to uh, one hospital where we were uh, shepherded through um, the triage area, uh, where there was a cache of weapons that patients and caregivers dropped off before they uh, entered the hospital grounds. Uh, and we went uh, through the wards, which were filled um, with uh, patients to the brim on uh, iron beds, often two to a bed, uh, people also on mats on the floor. Um, and uh, where there wasn't space, people spilled on, onto the verandas uh, outside the hospital. And the men and boys were often um, burned or injured with, uh, from gun violence uh, or from machetes or had fractures. Uh, women also often had obstructed labor um, um, or also injured, uh, and children, uh, those of which weren't injured, had severe malaria uh, or ab acute abdomens from typhoid perforation or appendicitis or the like. The words, the words smelled of uh, blood and wounds uh, and sweat and smoke, um, and it was extremely impactful as someone who uh, wasn't uh, uh, in surgical training program. The hospital had no surgeon or person to provide surgery. Uh, and therefore it was hard to call the patients lying there with these surgical conditions patients when there wasn't a doctor to care for them uh, or enough nurses to provide um, the solace that they needed. The hospital acted more like respite or a hospice program, uh, a quiet place um, for people on all sides of the conflict to uh, either recover nearly miraculously um, or die without the threat of violence. So the matron of the hospital took us through these wards back to an operating room uh, that would serve as their sleeping quarters for the night. It was dark and quiet, the windows were open, um, and the operating table was broken and crooked. Uh, the tiles, I remember, emanating heat. Um, and then like the rest of the hospital that was jam-packed with patients, it was empty. There were no patients in the operating room. And the irony and paradox of an empty operating room in a hospital and in a country with so many surgical needs uh, was certainly not lost uh, on myself or my team. Um, and it, uh, as I said, it changed my um, career forever. As I lay there that night, listening to uh, the pains of all these patients um, and being unable to care for their injuries and perforations and burns, uh, I vowed to do a few things. Uh, one, to gain the knowledge and skills necessary to provide the care required uh, for these patients. Uh, two, to find ways to intersect public health uh, and surgery. And then three was to improve access to surgical care, um, both uh, through systematic means but also through teaching particularly for patients who face extraordinary barriers to uh, accessing surgical care. So I um, retooled my entire residency application while I was in uh, South Sudan uh, and returned to interview. Uh, of the places I interviewed was here at the University of Washington, where I um, was amazed to meet now uh, my career mentors like Charlie Mock and Ben Anderson and Ron Mayer and Eileen Bulger and Nicole Gibran and Karen Horvath. They were extraordinary um, uh, uh, hosts and experts that I was able to engage with during my residency interview uh, and through conversations around that time. Um, and the UW uh, had, had uh, and has a global surgery track, uh, though at the time it wasn't particularly formal. And I was a little nervous as someone new to the field 
about uh, entering a program without a very formal um, global surgery training program. Um, however, as I uh, in, obviously went to, to residency here at the university, um, I was exposed to lots of opportunities um, because it wasn't particularly formal. They were, uh, they were able to support my interests uh, and link me with people in and outside of the department who uh, had uh, ties to global surgery and could uh, further my passions and um, in research. Uh, I did two years of, uh, of, of Fogarty Fellowship during my uh, training program and I studied trauma system capacity assessment uh, preparedness and organization in Ghana. I also enrolled and completed in a PhD program uh, in public health with a focus on health system strengthening um, and encountered many opportunities to grow not only my network but um, uh, expertise and passions around global surgery. So um, now that I've uh, finished fellowship and, uh, and now a junior faculty here at the university, um, I've been given the honor and privilege of um, furthering our program uh, and building on the successes that it has had. And several of my colleagues here, uh, or those that I mentioned uh, earlier, as well as Rebecca Main and Sarah Greenberg and I, have really thought a lot about what the future of global surgery training might be, particularly here, but also outside of the, uh, the university. And some of the things that we have been thinking about are related to standardization and balance. Uh, and that's not only a balance of clinical care, which many residents expect to be the, the, the crux of a global surgery training program, uh, but also research, edu education, uh, being engaged with uh, advocacy and health policy, uh, as well as leadership skills. We feel that all of these are very important uh, in global surgery, namely because as a nascent academic uh, pursuit and field, um, you have to be very well trained and broadly trained to be able to overcome um, some of the lack of infrastructure that exists around uh, global surgery. Um, we um, expect and are working toward uh, contributing to an international curriculum in, in global surgery for training programs that are relevant not only for the United States trainees but for trainees uh, across the world who would also benefit from similar um, uh, teaching points uh, and uh, expertise to be able to co-localize faculty more formally uh, with residents, both um, from our program and uh, from without our program, uh, in a way to provide a standardized training environment. Uh, we've learned a lot from the Fogarty program in terms of uh, the consortium and hub-based model to identify ways to um, train people outside of the institution itself, but through a consortium of experts and resources that provide a really broad foundation framework to uh, build an education on. And then thinking from the get-go uh, about bidirectionality, how we can ensure that not only trainees in the United States, but trainees outside of the United States benefit from a lot of these principles and teachings uh, of global surgery. We also um, want to work and advocate for programs being aligned with the ACGME uh, and the American Board of Surgery so that during your training, uh, all of your hard work toward global surgery is recognized uh, toward certification and accreditation. Um, in addition, there are uh, lots of opportunities to have pre-travel um, practical and educational and safety programs uh, that don't have to be repeated um, by each global surgery program that uh, could potentially be um, uh, uh, consolidated into to several areas or programs uh, to allow trainees to have positive and safe experiences when they uh, leave the country. So when planning for a career in global surgery, particularly toward uh, the middle and end of your residency, it's important to really sit down and spend some time with yourself and your loved ones to figure out what your, uh, uh, your goals and objectives are. It's really important to know yourself um, and as I said, your, your goals and objective as a, as a faculty member. So before you're forced to do it, think about what resources you need to be successful uh, as a junior faculty and as you advance throughout your career. Um, outline a strategy to address the barriers to those resources that you don't currently have and how uh, creative ways that you could uh, achieve those, particularly through uh, being exposed to other experts or networks within your future uh, university home. And it's important to be flexible and malleable as you uh, go along your uh, junior faculty journey, but certainly having a vision and a plan that you can always fall back on um, when things get a little bit tricky. Now, most programs aren't going to be able to offer you all of the things that you need to be successful immediately. Uh, and you have to build those through collaboration um, and uh, leveraging resources within and outside of your department and potentially even your university. Uh, but you can negotiate for things, not always um, uh, money or time, 
but um, the way they, they um, uh, promote you to their colleagues or to other uh, institutions, organizations related to your university, um, the way that you're uh, allowed to participate in meetings outside of, um, of the United States and, and, and so forth. And just as uh, it's important to grow your mentorship, program, your mentorship um, uh, group as a trainee, it's equally as important to do so as a faculty member. There are many people who have done all of this before you um, and lots who you, can, uh, who you can rely on to give you good advice, uh, to help steer you in the direction to make you successful. Uh, and again, don't just think within your university, but think outside of that as well. Um, and as we wrap up, um, when you are working in global surgery, it's important that you demonstrate value. Uh, because uh, it is such a new field, uh, there's a lot of uncertainties and trepidation about letting faculty uh, fully embrace global surgery. And fortunately, I found a home here at the University of Washington that uh, is extremely embracing, encouraging, and supportive of global surgery programs. Um, but you might all not find yourself in uh, positions that, um, that have such unanimous support. And when you demonstrate value, you have to think beyond just the financial bottom line. Think about what it does for the social bottom line for your organization, particularly as you educate uh, and do program building which all adds to the legacy of your training programs. Uh, it's important to facilitate purpose and cohesion around global surgery, not only with the people that you work with, but the people that you relate with at work who do other uh, academic pursuits um, so that they view global surgery as an uh, important research endeavor and a priority for the university and your department. Uh, and like all academic pursuits, finding funding, particularly at the federal level, uh, is a challenge. And as you design your research uh, and training programs, um, you can think about a few activities that are more likely to be funded than, than others. Uh, these include things that are um, funding streams that are directed toward international work, a common example being what uh, the Fogarty International Center does for its um, researchers. Um, other things to think about are conditions that are very important to the United States um, but uh, are more common elsewhere or uh, systems or interventions that are also important for the United States that might be more suitable for uh, research outside of the United States. And then opportunities to study the impact of um, what a health system in the United States might be like if we de-implemented something or before we uh, uh, had an intervention. For instance, um, the work of Monica Vavilala here at the Harborview Injury Prevention and Research Center uh, has done lots of work on uh, traumatic brain injury, particularly uh, in Argentina where there's not some of the um, uh, advanced monitoring uh, modalities like uh, a Lycox, for instance, and you're able to study how, how traumatic brain injury uh, is cared for without that uh, t technology. Most academic um, surgeons have a clear strategy and a, and a plan for how to go from uh, a pilot study to a, a small observational study to a larger observational study or that then generates an intervention trial um, etc. Uh, and as you gain um, notoriety and expertise in a topic, grant funding theref th uh, therefore follows. Uh, however, not only is there less grant funding, uh, but there's less grant um, funding for a, di a d diversity of topics in global surgery. So it's important for us to be a little more oppor opportunist potentially um, and be more broad researchers, within a, a, certainly within a theme or a topic, but being able to identify and choose uh, grants that fit your research more broadly and not necessarily a specific research um, plan um, uh, as in other academic surgical pursuits. And then when money isn't available immediately to, to do what you're interested in uh, in global surgery, there are lots of opportunities to apply the same approaches and techniques in global surgery where you are locally and regionally. Uh, and here at the University of Washington, we're very lucky to have an enormous catchment area of um, uh, five states uh, that provides us with the opportunity to care for a very diverse population um, uh, with the same issues of access uh, and marginalization that often impacts uh, surgical care uh, elsewhere. So please feel free to email me about any of the things we talked about, any questions you have. I'm very, like I said, eager to work with the Global Surgery Student Association uh, and be a resource as an individual and as a, a training program uh, to each of you.